And squeeze away under the uh, guidance of Jürgen Grobler. All they've been able to do is blast off the start. And they've done that each and every race. They're doing that now and looking at the yellow jerseys because they are also uh, current World Cup leaders, having won at Munich and also a Poznan. But uh, for them, really, it's the bigger picture. It's the World Championships and then beyond that, Beijing in 2008. And really, this crew is just sensational in the way that it's been moving around. And we're looking at the crew in lane number three. A lane order for you. The Czech Republic are in one. New Zealand are in lane number two. Great Britain, the world champions, in three. The Slovenian crew are in lane number four. Netherlands are in five. They're the world, world silver medalists. And Germany in lane number six. Dan Topolsky is alongside me. He's been watching their progress through the regatta and particularly also in the season. Dan, yeah, this, is a, this is a great crew, isn't it, really? It's a terrific crew, and they've, uh, they've moved on a lot since, uh, even since last year when they were unbeaten. They're unbeaten again. They were run very close um, in the first uh, World Cup regatta by Holland, who are just below, just in front here, or bottom of the picture. Uh, and they've changed their order since then. So this is the first time they've got a chance to, uh, to to see how they measure up against the Dutch with this new order. They've moved Peter Reed down to sit behind uh, Andy Hodge at stroke. So that blast, that traditional quick fin start out of the blocks has shown uh, that the British crew are able to get out front. They're half a length now from yeah. Netherlands. Now the crew from Netherlands were meant to race them in the final of the Stewards Challenge Cup at Henley Raw Regatta last weekend, but uh, Great Britain had to pull out due to uh, a bit of illness there from uh, Hodgie in the stroke seat. They were bitterly disappointed about that, but Great Britain know how to race, really, and, uh, and they're showing that it was the right decision, isn't it? Great Britain at 35 strokes a minute, uh, the Dutch at 37 strokes a minute, so that's certainly going to be costing the Dutch uh, quite a lot, but it's the way they row as well. They're very floaty, they're very, they're very flowy, the, uh, the Dutch crew. You can just see them, they just keep the boat moving along. There's a lovely kind of continuity to the way that they move. You don't see any dip in the stern of their boat. So usually you see when crews come forward for the, for the take of the stroke, the stern just dips down. Here, it's not dipping at all, so there's a real constancy in the flow of their boat. But uh, they're only half a length down on the Great Britain four, uh, moving very well indeed. Down the Netherlands look good, don't they? they uh, I mean, at the moment they look, they're in their rhythm, but they're just sitting there at that half a length position down, poised to move. We race over 2,000 metres, and that's a great view there of the they Netherlands. They look so there. composed, don't they? Yeah. They're very composed, very thoughtful there. Not a big man at stroke there for Moulin. He's a very good, wonderful uh, uh, stroke man. Moves very, very nicely indeed. So have Great Britain been playing cat and mouse? Have they just been sitting poised to move with Netherlands and the rest of the world? It's the final of the men's Costas 4. It's the heavyweight division. Great Britain are in lane number three. And now into the third 500. Jürgen Grobler, the coach of the British crew, really gets them off quickly. Settle, get your rhythm out to 1,000. And then, as you move through 1,100, start to move it on. You can see now Great Britain upping the rate. They've gone up about one and a half strokes per minute for a little push of 10 strokes, and that should really stretch the lead out to about three-quarters of a length lead. And we're looking here through Steve Williams in the two-seat. He makes the calls, and he's such a cool, calm customer that when he does make the calls, each and every one is just decisive, Dan. In the, in the, uh, around, the, around the camp the, uh, the last couple of days, the Dutch, who were pushing very well um, in the race in the semi-final, they think that they really are onto a winner here. They think that they're going very much better than they were, but uh, the Brits were not, not very impressed by that, and uh, they're out here to show exactly where they stand in this race. If you remember, Dan, of the World Championships last year, the Dutch crew pushed, were the only real crew to push uh, Great Britain in that sort of third 500 into the last bit, but uh, the experience of Great Britain and the confidence, well, they were able to hold that push off. Well, it is a test of this new new uh, lineup, this new order with Peter Reid at, uh, at three. That's very, very important to see whether this works. But the Dutch are still up there at 37 and a half strokes a minute, and uh, the Britain crew looking pretty good, though, under pretty pressure there, using a lot more muscle and power as they come into the last 500. Great Britain have led right from the first stroke, but they, they've come to do that, haven't they, really, over the last year and a half of uh, their history. The men's heavyweight Coxless 4 final, they powered out, they're leading, but they're under pressure, really, from Netherlands in lane number five. The Czech Republic are in this race, they're in lane number one, they haven't really challenged whatsoever. New Zealand also there looking back in the white boat. Contrast the styles 
of the white boat down there, the second boat down, New Zealand in lane number two. Gary, where's Germany? Germany, who were in, uh, in uh, Munich, they were right up there, second um, to, to Great Britain, really very close. Nowhere, nowhere at all here in this race. Germany really, Dan, caused Great Britain to make the changes, the seating order, Indeed. because they pushed them so hard. Germany in lane number six, again, we haven't seen them because they are pretty much racing the umpire's launch. Out front, though, Great Britain again. There's Hodge to the left of your pitcher. Andrew Hodge there just taking them up. Peter Reed sits behind them, backing him up there, moving it on. There's the Dutch crew. They're about to, I would say they've got a, a third of, over, third of an overlap lead. Great Britain looking uh, pretty, pretty good. Germany are uh, fifth. Well, fifth there, a check at the 1500 meter mark. You can see number six now. Everybody else racing for that bronze medal position. There's only one color on the mind of Great Britain as they come up to the line. It's the color of gold. They've been in the uh, gold medal position right from the start. The crew from Netherlands have pushed them hard, but they're not going to get it today. Maybe they'll have to wait for another race. Three quarters of a length up. Great Britain get it. 1 1 1. That's the uh, three races, three World Cups this season. First in each and every one. Well, we wouldn't expect anything less. Great Britain win, the Dutch in second place. In the end, it was an easy victory for Great Britain. The Netherlands are in second place, and Germany squeeze up into bronze medal position. So for a second year in a row, Great Britain finished the World Cup Series defeated. It's a great run. They're starting to build up an impressive uh, list of victories. Peter Reed there who sits in the three seat.